Hey everybody, this is Brian. If you're following along, this is our third video in our Visual Basic .NET Express tutorial. Um, today we're going to actually run Visual Studio, or I'm sorry, Visual Basic Express. Uh, this is what the page looks like. And like I've said at the beginning, we're going to skip a lot of theory and just jump right into the heart of the matter. So just go File, New Project, or you can also just click New Project. And unfortunately, the project window is a little bigger than what I'm recording, so you just choose Windows Form Application. We'll cover all these other applications in due time. Just hit the OK button. And let me actually drag that so you can see what I'm talking about. And one thing I'd like to do is just get my environment set up. You notice we have these little windows. Notice how they disappear. But notice how these don't. That's because of this little push pin icon you can auto hide things. For example, move over the toolbox, press the tool pin, I'm sorry, the push pin, and notice how the toolbox stays put. Now if you're wondering, these are all the little t little components you can put on a Windows form, and there's a lot of them. Don't worry about them, we're going to cover them later. Another thing I like to do, if you double click your form, you see this is the code view see form1.vb and form1.vb design. The design view is actually where you design your Windows form. The other is the code view where you actually modify the code. And you see form1 events. These are the events generated. And here's the current ones. You see highlighted is load. And that is because load is currently in there. These are the available events that you can have in there. For example, you could say one of lost focus or mouse click. Don't worry about any of this right now. We're going to cover all this later. I'm just getting you used to the environment. One thing you should note is to go to Tools, Options, and in the Options windows, go to Text Editor Basic, and then Editor, and select, I'm sorry, not Word Wrap, Line Numbers. Click OK. A lot of times in some of these examples, I'm going to say, oh, look, there's an error on line 5. Well, if you don't have line numbers visible, you're going to be doing a lot of counting. And flip back to design view real quick. This is the Solutions Explorer over here. As you can see, there you've got your project in form1.vb. This is a form or a Windows form. That's the window that will actually be displayed. As you can see, it looks pretty similar to Windows you've seen in the past, except for it's just blank and this is the properties window and you see the object is form1 and you see it's got some properties in here like context menu, cursor, double buffered, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, every object has its properties and you can edit most of the properties in here. I say most, not all. It's very important to keep in mind. Everything's an object. Well what's an object? Well I hate to sound redundant, an object is just an object. It goes into object-oriented programming, something we will cover later. Um, I don't want to do a lot of theory, but something you need to understand. So let's just drag and drop a button on here. Move it around wherever you want it. And you notice how the properties window now says button 1. And the text is button 1. We're going to change that to say hello. Whoops, help if I could spell. And then just click off somewhere. You notice how the button magically says, say hello. Now, we're going to make this button do something. So double click the button. And you see how we now have, let me hide the toolbox just so we can get some screen real estate back. We have two events. We have form one load and button one click. Well, as you might have guessed, form one load, this event is called when the form is loaded. Button one click is called when the button is clicked. Now this is inside of a class called Form1. Now remember everything is an object and you're probably still wondering, Brian, what are you talking about? Okay, A class is a template, like a blueprint for a house. An object is an instance of that template. Let's say you're in the real estate business and you want to build a house. The first thing you do is build a blueprint, which we will call a class. And then when you start building houses based on that blueprint, those are instances called objects. Now, take a minute, kind of soak it in. This is the basic structure of a Visual Basic program. Notice that you have a class and you have events inside. And inside these events, you want it to do something. A single quote is the start of a comment. 
comments are not processed. That's strictly for your benefit. So let's run this program. Debug, start debugging. Notice how you can also press F5 and the screen loads and you go into debug mode. And this is the immediate window that you can put some output. Click the button, notice nothing happens. Well, that's because in our event, button one click, all we have is a comment, nothing happens. So for this tutorial, I'm going to keep it very brief and we're going to make that button do something. Notice how when you start typing, this little window pops up giving you options. Let me delete some. You see how it has all these options. And as you type, the options change. That's called IntelliSense, or CodeComplete, depending on which camp you're in. And it also has a snazzy tooltip, which unfortunately goes off the recording area that explains what this does. Just, you know, go to mex message box, and then dot show. Now, you see that after I hit enter, there's a squiggly underline. When you move your mouse over it, it says overload resolution failed because no access, no accessible show accepts this number of arguments. What does all of that garbage mean? Well, we are calling a function, or I'm sorry, a method, and it takes arguments, something we will get into later. But for the sake of argument, just type in a double quote. You notice how this tooltip, this info window appears, and it says show, and then text to string. Don't worry about that yet. We're going to explain it later. All you need to know is that we are giving it an argument. And no, we're not starting a fight. We're just telling it some parameters. Just type in hello world. Save your work. Notice how the squiggly line disappears. That means that that code should run. Visual Basic will go through and try to check your code before you run it to reduce errors. Save your work. Press F5. And let me bring that back on the screen here. Now when you click the button, a little window pops open. This is a message box. Hello world. So we have our button, and when we click it, it calls button1.click, which shows a message box that says hello world. Congratulations, you have just built your first program. I know, I know, it doesn't do much. We're going to get there. You got to learn to crawl before you can walk. So really dig in, put your thinking caps on, because in the next few tutorials we're going to start covering variables. And that's something that's going to be very difficult for you to understand if this is your first programming language. If not, you'll fly right through it because every programming language has variables. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this video educational and entertaining. And as always, leave me any questions or comments on my YouTube page. Thanks.